What's going on guys? My name is Bart Komar and welcome to my shop. You guys haven't seen this place yet, so let me show you around. All right, so this is a three car garage that measures 35 feet by 22 feet. And initially when we bought this house, the plan was for me to use this temporarily, do a few things while we worked on the house and then build a dedicated shop right next door. This right here is where the shop is going to be. This is where the table saw is gonna sit right there. And I'm just gonna be like, Shh. But two and a half years later, I'm still here. So let me show you guys around, starting with the heart of the shop down here in the center. We have the assembly table, workbench, outfeed table, whatever you want to call it. This is where the majority of the breakdown happens. When I first got in here, I needed a workbench, so I slapped two pieces of plywood together, put it on some four by fours, and over the years, it's evolved into where I do the majority of my work. Down below it, I got some quick clamps, and these are super useful when you're just assembling stuff and you need a second pair of hands. That's why, you know, quick clamps. Over on the right side, I do have a vise that does a little bit of wobble and it does need to be readjusted. On the opposite side of the assembly table, we have the big table saw. I've been wanting a saw stop for years now and finally, two years ago, I was able to get it for Christmas. Not only did I want this saw for its safety feature, but also I really wanted that five horsepower motor. I can run stock as big as will fit through that blade and I don't have any issues with bogging down. I also did get the 52 inch rail on it so I can run full sheets through here without having to break down with a track saw. So I highly recommend this. If you have an opportunity to get one, do it. You won't be disappointed. This is my Steel City joiner. They don't make these anymore. The company went under and I picked this thing up from another woodworker that was upgrading his joiner. I went from a six inch to an eight inch for 200 bucks. I know, 200 bucks, you guys are probably hating me, but those deals are out there, whether it's Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist is still around. Make sure you guys are checking those websites because deals like this, they don't come around that often and I'll be looking, so make sure you are too. All right, let me show you guys my workbench that I absolutely love. This thing is a 200 year old workbench and it still works perfectly. It's got two vices on it and these vices have the original wood screw in here. And you would think that there's not a whole lot of holding power, but it, it really works. It, it's amazing how well such an old workbench works and I love it. I do a lot of my joinery on here, a lot of my layouts, planing. I'm never getting rid of this thing. This thing is the bee's knees. And now over to the metal area. This is where I wanna say I do a lot of metal work, but I dabble. We got a metal workbench with a Wilton vise. This is one of my favorite vices. I actually collect vices. So I have, I think seven or eight in the shop, two or three of them work, but they're really cool to look at. So I'm a big fan of having tools out so that I can actually see what I have and not forget that I have it. So I like to have all of my pliers, my air guns up here, a bunch of other glues up here, readily available so that I can just grab it and go and do my work. Oh, this is kind of cool. You know what this is? This is a old light off of a army truck. I got this in Afghanistan from the free yard. There's a thing called the free yard where units leaving country just dump all of their stuff and you can go and pick it up. So this is a old magnetic light and one day we're going to use it for a project, but not today. Right over here, I have my Lincoln MP210. This thing is an absolute beast welder. I love this thing. It, it does everything from MIG, TIG, stick, all the icks. And I'm really enjoying using this thing because it's very easy and I do want to incorporate a lot more metal into my projects. Right behind here, 
This is my memory wall. And I take little bits and pieces from every project and I kind of just stick them up here. And we have this little rock and it says, The Struggle. I got this rock out of a hole when I was building a deck and I battled with this rock for, for like four hours just to get it out. But there's things in here like, you know, the a failed attempt at the pencil table. This is the cell phone case. If you guys haven't seen that video, it's pretty good. So I just like to put little mementos of, you know, my journey on YouTube. And, and this is the skull. This is the skull from the last. It feels good. It feels good to remember all those, all those fun projects. And this hot air blowing on top of me right now, this is the Mr. Cool AC and heater. I absolutely love it because it's quiet. It's blowing hot air on me right now and you guys probably can't even hear it. And I can be in the shop any time of the year. In the wintertime, I don't have to worry about glue not working. And in the summertime, you know, I sweat a lot. So it kind of prevents me from looking yucky. Right next to the welding table, I have a cabinet that houses a lot of my epoxy and finishing stuff. So I got Bunch of different brushes in here. These are different pigments that I keep for, for epoxy projects. And of course, syringes. No, that's just for epoxy guys, just epoxy. Down below here is where I keep a lot of my finishing projects. So lacquers, spar urethanes, all that good stuff. And on this side, I have all of my stains and different paints. Oh, and up here, this is, this is Walter. This is Walter, this is just, you know, inspiration. This is inspiration. Here, sit up here, Walter. Walter doesn't want to sit. These are another momentum from overseas. These are spent shell casings. This is a 40 mic mic. So 40 millimeter round that was shot out of a, I think a C-17. But this thing, this is a Polish round. I don't even know um, what size it is. And on here, there's some letters on here that say Zmniejszony, meaning that it's made smaller. So I don't know what they were making smaller with this, but... A tank? Uh, maybe? I, I don't know. But, you know, this will put a hurting on you. That's for sure. Walter! Next to that, I got all of my sockets, Allen wrenches in here punches, screwdrivers that like who needs like 200 screwdrivers, but you know, you have every size that you may possibly need just because garage sale, they're like 50 cents. Same thing down here, bunch of pliers and more wrenches that, you know, cause you're always missing the 10 millimeter wrench. So you got to have like 17 of them. And over here, this cabinet just kind of houses, you know, a catch-all things that don't have a spot. And then this cabinet right here is where I have a lot of my epoxies, fuel for the yard, chainsaw glues, and, you know, this wasp sprays because everybody needs like 40 of them when you're a homeowner, especially when you live in a rural area and you're allergic to bees. So, and if you're shooting you know, YouTube, you need these little tiny cups so you can actually see the epoxy pour in here. Who wants to see epoxy being poured in one? Clear. And this is my hated sanding station. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I think I have another one over there, seven. I have seven different sanders that I use. Yes, I use, but I hate this setup. It's you know, I'm sanding something over here and it's hitting this thing and vice versa. Pieces are always getting in the way. I want to get a 2x72 and a edge sander and that's it. So hopefully one day that'll be something that I can do in the new shop. But for now, this kind of works. Down below it, I got, you know, my paint supplies. We got rags, all different kinds, gloves. So this is kind of the area that houses things that don't have another place again. Let's take a look at my lathe. I absolutely love this thing. This is the Grizzly G0766. And again, I picked this thing up on Facebook Marketplace. I think I paid like 600 bucks for it. It was an amazing deal. And I got like 2000 board feet of ash 
to go along with this lathe. So absolutely love finding those deals as I mentioned before. And I don't use this thing as much as I want to. I will come in here once in a while at night and just turn just for me to kind of zen out and relax. But it's just another tool for me to use in adding parts to projects. Moving on down, we have the, I call this thing the garage sale cabinet. I uh, got this thing for 40 bucks. These are actually two separate cabinets. They were brown, really ugly. Um, so I painted them all black and they housed little pieces like, you know, connectors for air hoses, soldering tools. I got my digital calipers in here, lathe calipers, LED lights that I use once in a while, stuff for the Glowforge garden connectors. You know, you need sprinklers, like 60 of them around the house and my CNC hold down. So it's like little tiny stuff. And speaking of the CNC, right next door. This is what I call my robot area. I got the X-Carve CNC right here. This was given to me by uh, Mike Clifford, the Modestrial maker. He outgrew his CNC and he said, hey, do you want a CNC? I said, absolutely. And this thing has been a godsend. I use it for intricate projects that, you know, I think I can't make by hand or I need to make really quickly. And underneath the robot station, we have a, just a wood storage where I just take all of my scraps, cutoffs, and I toss them in there in preparation for the top secret projects. Yep, so this is just a, a weird glue up that I started about three years ago in hopes of making kind of having second thoughts about it. I don't know what it's gonna be. So maybe you guys can kind of give me an idea. I thought about making like a huge donut where you can kind of sit inside of it, um, but it's all gonna be just pieces from different projects glued on here and carved in some shape one day. But yeah, so top secret. Don't tell anybody. So right over here, I have a little bit more organized wood storage. So this is just a metal rack where I can stack some of my longer boards and for the shorter stuff, there's an area right behind there where I can just shove them in there. And then behind here is where I keep all of my sheet goods. So I could probably fit about, I don't know, 15, 20 sheets right up in here. And again, this is just an area where I can keep sheets and it's not, very well placed in the shop because to get a full sheet out, I gotta move all this stuff and I have the tracks to worry about for the garage door. So getting a sheet out of there is a little, little tricky. So I just, you know, buy a new sheet as I need it. And these have been sitting here for probably about two years now. Right over here, I have a spray can rack where I have all of my colors and I do, a little bit of I have spray paint and my clamp rack this was a project from a couple years ago it was just this section here because I pick up clamps at garage sales um, whenever Lowe's or Home Depot has them on sale I'm gonna grab two or three so all of my clamps are gonna be different so I needed something that kind of fit that I have all different kinds of clamps mold. So this works really well. This is for my longer stuff. And this is my box joint jig that I use as a clamp rack as well. So, and then in front of all that, I got my big tool area. Starting off with the router table. So I built this project about a year ago. There's plans for it, but I absolutely love having swing out bit storage. You can swivel them out of the way whenever you need to access more bits. So the left size houses all my big ones and then the right size houses all of my quarter inch shank bits. So flush trim bits, baby bits, and I got some round over bits. Top of this thing is a Rockler Phenolic top, which is absolutely great. And it houses their pro lift, this thing is an absolute dream to have. I used to have a router table that was just a piece of MDF with a router screwed into it and it sucked. And now with this thing, I can do all sorts of 
routing that may be required from a project. And then down below it, we just have some more router storage. To the router table is my Powermatic drum sander. This thing is great to have whenever you're running epoxy projects and you need to take down, you know, a little bit of epoxy to get down to the wood. I don't use this thing as often as I probably should. It is set up with 120 grit sandpaper and I just don't change it out. So I will run boards in here to flatten them out and I will do all of my finishing at the workbench. Gin and juice, yeah. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. And right next to that, we got the band saws. So I got the little and the big. This is a new acquisition from Harvey Industries. This is their 15 inch alpha bandsaw and I absolutely love this thing. It's set up with a three quarter inch resaw blade and it can pretty much rip through anything. So I'm super excited to have this next to the little guy. So this is a Steel City bandsaw that I got for like 200 bucks on Craigslist back in the day. And it's been painted black because, you know, black's the best color. But this one is set up with a 1 8 inch blade so I can do a lot of the intricate curvy cuts. But you can see what the difference is between a 14 and a 15 inch bandsaw. So I'm super lucky to have both of them where I can have two different blades set up and I don't have to constantly change blades when I'm doing different processes. All right, moving on over. We're almost at the tool wall. So right over here, I have a little bench top drill press. This is a Delta, $50 on Craigslist. And it does the trick for now. Um, I would love a large drill press where I can have a lot of space between the deck and the drill. But you know, for now, it does the trick. And at some point, when we're in the new shop, we're gonna upgrade this thing to a larger one. One, two, three, four, five, six, 40. One, two, three, four, five, 19, 20. That's a hundred. One, two, three, four, 109. 109 hand planes. I have a problem. I have a big problem. It's, it's a good problem. The hand planes, the majority of them are not sharpened. They're not ready to go. They need to be restored. I probably have about a dozen of them that work. And whenever I need a hand plane for a specific task, I will sharpen it at that point and it will stay sharp. I just have the two through the eight that are sharp and a couple of odds and ends that, um, that I keep in good working order. Other than that, they're just up there to kind of look at and enjoy because I really do love hand planing. A lot of times I'll just come into the shop and just plane just to plane without recording anything or even making a project. So they are a lot of fun. If you don't know about hand planes, I got a couple of videos out there for you guys linked in the description below and I'll kind of walk you through how to use them, how to restore them and all that good stuff. So moving on down, we have the chisels and I'm a big fan of chisels as you can tell. I have all of my Western chisels down here that I love. These are my Stanleys and steel crafted chisel. That's me. That's ahead of me. It's gonna go on this uh, Bridge City Tools hand plane as the, uh, the front tote, which I'm really excited about. So my buddy Nick from Birch Toll Designs carved this on his CNC and uh, it's a pretty good looking head, huh? <laughs> but recently, uh, my buddy Chris introduced me to Japanese chisels and I'm a huge fan of these. They feel much heavier in the hand and I really do enjoy using them a lot more than I do the Western chisels, which are a little bit lighter and I don't know. It just, to me, it just feels like the Japanese stuff is more, um, it's got more oomph, you know? A Couple of mallets to include this big old massive mallet. This was a garage sale find and it's never been used, but I think it looks kind of cool on a tool wall. Hand saws, some more layout stuff. And then down below here is, I have all my drill bits. Well, not all of them, but again, I like to keep all the stuff out where it's visible so I don't forget about it. So I just come over here, grab the right drill that I need, and I can get back to work. This way I'm not going into cases and trying to find the right drill. It's all right there, and it's super easy. Down over here, we have some bins with, you know, screws and wall anchors and 
all the little hardware that I need for projects. And all of these, again, were picked up at a garage sale. A lot of times these will come just filled with stuff and you have no idea what's in it. But it's really great because sometimes you need a spring or something for a project and you just kind of go through all those bins and you, most of the time I'm going to find what I need. So, But the majority of my hardware is going to be in my miter station. This miter station is, what do we say, 19, 19 feet? On the left hand side of the miter station we have 10 feet and 12 feet on this side. I can even extend this a little bit further if I take the saw and pull it out, I can actually run boards into my laundry, I can go through that door and I can run a 16 foot board if I want to. Back to the miter station and all my drawers. So in here, so I have all of my sandpaper organized from 80 grit to like 600 grit and then all the odds and ends. So everything is gonna be in this drawer that goes to sanding. And in this drawer, I have all of my screws that are labeled uh, one inch through four inch and then you know pocket hole screws that you need. And below it is kind of like another catch-all for hoses and oh leather so I'm getting into leather work so I got some scrap leather in here and buffing stuff buffing for epoxy. In the middle of the miter station is obviously the miter saw so this is a Bosch 12 inch dual bevel miter saw. But I ended up getting this thing because of the space saver on the backside. I did have a DeWalt with the rails on it. And if I were to have that set up in this spot right here, I would have to actually have the saw somewhere out here. So it being able to collapse all the way back here allows me to have this saw pushed all the way back. I am a little bit biased when it comes to Bosch and this saw because I'm a Bosch fan. A lot of my drills and other tools are Bosch, um, but this thing does have absolutely awful dust collection. And recently my buddy Chris from Benchtop Woodworks sent me this dust collection boot for it and it really makes a world difference. So now I'm happy to be using this thing because the miter saw honestly is probably my favorite tool. I can break down stuff, I can do miters, I can do all sorts of stuff. And this thing is probably the very first thing that I take long stock through and break it down. To the right of the miter saw, we have all of my blades for the miter saw, the table saw, and even blades for my lawnmower are in here. All the sharpie sharpie stuff goes in here and I even have this, uh, you know, so whenever I need to touch up the beard for a shop tour video, didn't even know this thing was in there, but we're gonna keep it in there. Yeah. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the last cabinet in the shop and this one, I actually found this in the trash and it had a big vice on it. So I'm like, hey, we're gonna take it. And now it serves as a collection for all the maker stickers. So if you got a sticker, reach out to me and we'll definitely slap it on here. But in here is where I keep a lot of my cases for all the tools, chicken food. A mouse got into it, look at that probably still in the cabinet. But then we also have, uh, these are baggies. This is not dope, these are baggies of different wood dust. Curly maple, we have ebony, walnut. This is like making your own wood filler and I'm pretty sure that every woodworker has, has baggies like this. Tax receipts. This is where I keep all of my tax receipts. So make sure you keep your receipts because you know you can expense things like Chicken food, maybe. But I also keep all of my sharpening stuff in here. Stones, they get kind of get stored in here. So whenever I need to touch up a hand plane, I will go into this little cabinet and sharpen the blades, kicking and screaming. All right, so that's it. That's the uh, last cabinet, I guess, in the shop. And I have been kicking the idea around with you guys about a new shop. And yes, that's in the works. Let me show you guys exactly where it's going to be. Hot chickens. Coop de Villa is in the house. Hi, Rue. Come here, baby. Oh, he's such a cutie. But they are right in the middle of where the shop is going to go. 
it's gonna sit right here. It's gonna be 30 by 60. So basically we are tripling the size of the current shop right now. Ah, I can't wait! It's gonna be a two story barn style building and I'm super excited to share that experience with you guys. So that's it guys, that is the shop tour and kind of the property, you guys got to see a little bit of it. But if you guys wanna see more, make sure you check out the links in the description below where I have a whole lot of videos from the DIY dream home and you can see more of the property and more of the builds. If you have any questions regarding this shop tour about tools or anything about in the shop, let me know also in the comment section below. And as always, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification. Thank you so much for joining me in this experience. I will see you guys next time. Up, up, no, like jump up. Come on, up, come here, little rat. Ooh. This is Stella. She's my shop partner. She's a little, a little crazy. Come here, you guys know Thor. He's an OG and he spends a lot of time in the shop and just chilling, maxing, relaxing, right? That's my boy.